When it comes to high performance sports cars, in my opinion, it doesn't get much better than the 997 Turbo in terms of value for money. Genuine modern day supercar performance here for less than the price of a 718 Boxster currently. We're gonna give you a 997 Turbo buyer's guide in this video, giving you everything you need to know about the car when it comes to buying one with input from an industry specialist as well. And then we're gonna take this on the road and find out just how it stacks up today, 15 years after this car was first released. The 997 Turbo was first released in 2006, fully 15 years ago now. It was based, of course, on the first water-cooled 911 Turbo, that being the 996 Turbo, albeit with some key changes, particularly in the aesthetics department. As you can see, the 997 Turbo, like the 997 generation generally, went back to what we know as the traditional 911 aesthetics. Simple, rounded headlights up front, got rid of the 996's, what were at the time, controversial fried egg headlamp design. The 911 Turbo, as of any 911 really, isn't it? The business end is the back end. This is where the flat six sits. Uh, twin turbo charged, of course. The 911 Turbo has been twin turbo charged since the 993 era. The 997 though was the first to utilize VTG, variable turbine geometry. We'll come onto that in terms of a little bit more detail later on. But as you can see, the 997 Turbo comes with a super wide, aggressive body, punctuated on the rear wings by the side air intakes, which feed air directly into intercoolers, just aft of the back wheels on either side. We better talk figures, hadn't we? The 997 Turbo, it's all about power, of course, power on this 480 horsepower now for context the 996 turbo previously had 420 horsepower so it's a 60 brake horsepower leap it's quite a sizable leap and something that porsche didn't really replicate in its generational evolution of the 911 turbo until the 992 today over the 991.2 predecessor so 480 brake horsepower torque is up by 60 newton meters as well to a maximum of 620 newton meters that's over a wider torque band as well from 1950 to 5000 rpm the flat six itself is just like the 996 turbo before it in fairness derived from the 911 gt1 that is a genuine le mans winning porsche 911 and that's part of what makes this car very very special now we've spoken about all the external changes on the 997 Turbo over the 996 before it. Inside it's more of the same, isn't it? In fact, the interior of the 996 Turbo is a quantum leap over that 996, particularly when it comes to build quality, much better use of really high quality materials in here. It still stands up really well today, 15 years later, don't forget. The 997's interior is a bit of a sweet spot, isn't it, in terms of the 911's lineage. It's still very much that traditional classic 911 layout, the front seats being really near to each other, the dashboard being quite shallow. But then mixed with that, we've got some early examples of the technology that we've come to know and love on the 911. For example, the now, to my mind, iconic sport chrono clock in the middle of the dash, plus some new features like the PASM button, and the sport throttle mapping button, as well as PCM, of course, although that is admittedly quite dated today. Transmission-wise on the 997 Turbo, you had two options. You had the six-speed manual, as here, which is the rare option, has to be said, or the five-speed Tiptronic semi-automatic gearbox. But how is the car getting on in the market today? Well, we'll speak to Jonathan Franklin now, who's an industry specialist with plenty of years experience to tell us how. Jonathan, you've been in the industry for, for years now, bought and yep. sold plenty of these, haven't you? Yep. It's also worth pointing out though, that this is your car. It is, yeah. So what do you like about the 997 Turbo generally then? Uh, well, I like it a lot. I've had it four years. Um, it's um, a great everyday supercar. For me, it's a great balance between um, old and new. A perception of the turbo cars perhaps is that, well, big power equals big bills. And obviously these are more complicated than the Carreras yep. by virtue of the turbochargers. How has this fared for you? Are they expensive to run or? There are a few other things that are probably a little bit more on a turbo than they are on a standard car. But, but the, as a rule of thumb, I think, you know, if you look after the car, um, it's probably the same as any other 997. Then yeah, for the driving enthusiast or connoisseur, the manual coupe is the one to have. But if you take into account the cabriolets uh, yeah. and the Tiptronics as well, so the 997 Turbo generally, yeah. like, 
Where are these sitting in the market at the moment? Um, I think a good car will cost you somewhere in the region of £60,000. Um, I think it's important to point out that there are cars for sale for, for probably less, but you really do have to make sure the car's been maintained properly. Um, otherwise, going back to your first comment, yes, um, you know, you could be in for big bills if, if, um, if the car's not been looked after. I think it is a, is a car you can still leave outside. Yeah, it's a, it's a great car. Um, and it's, I mean, the performance is still phenomenal today. Excellent, appreciate your time. I'm gonna go and give this a, a drive and an appraisal. I'll be kind, I promise. And we'll, we'll see how we get on, yeah. Somebody once told me that if you're buying a 911 Turbo, you're effectively buying two cars. You've got the performance side that the Turbo is very well known for, that brute force. But then it's also a pretty good town car as well. It's four wheel drive, there's plenty of traction, really comfortable as well, it has to be said. So within the context of the 911, you're getting that kind of docility, if you like, of the Carrera models. But then push on, turn that wick up to 10, and you've just got, as I say, that brute force and just, well, supercar spec performance that stands up just as much today in 2021 as it did when this first came out in 2006, which is timely considering we enter a national speed limit. Oof. Okay, so clearly this thing is still very, very, very fast by today's standards. But to be fair, with the 911 Turbo, it's always felt special from day one, hasn't it? And its star has never really fallen. Whereas other cars have a propensity to date quickly, either by metric of performance or technology. But with the 911 Turbo, that's never really happened. Its performance has always been breathtaking and an absolute benchmark of the genre. And similarly, it's always been a bit of a technological tour de force, whether that's mechanically uh, with the invention of intercoolers on the 930 to four wheel drive on the 993, or with this, the 997, variable turbine geometry. It's always been one step ahead of the game, isn't it? And what that means is regardless of how old the car is, it's going to put a smile on your face time and time again. Plenty fast enough, as I say, but dynamically, the 997 Gen 1 is a big leap forward over the 996, particularly on the front axle. It just feels a lot more direct and positive over the 996, which can feel quite kind of soft and bumbly. The manual itself, really nice, slick, light, precise throw through the gate. It's not a long throw at all. The clutch, by the way, is really light, very impressive for a car that's pushing nearly 500 brake horsepower. Traction, well, there's plenty of it. It's an uh, active four-wheel drive system, isn't it, that's carried over but evolved from the 996 Turbo. Also, as well, you've got that enhanced adaptability of the 997 that the 996 just doesn't have. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the sport button, which is essentially variable mapping or throttle mapping, um, and PASM as well. And as Jonathan said in our chat, activate PASM Sport, so the Sport chassis, the car really stiffens up. Just as we crawl through town, it's worth mentioning the duality of the 911 Turbo because, I mean, the 997's got it sussed, hasn't it? Really, really comfortable ride. The interior itself, as I said, it's a lovely place to be, isn't it? It astounds me that this car is 15 years old because it doesn't look it at all. It doesn't feel it either. Use of interior materials, as I say, a huge leap on from the 996 and it's all the better for it. Speaking of duality, brings us on nicely, doesn't it? To variable turbine geometry, VTG, of which the 997 Turbo was the first petrol engine road car to feature the technology. What is it? Well, in its simplest form, it's active vanes on the turbo. The vanes opening or closing to give you the best of both worlds, which is minimal turbo lag, but also maximum power. That technology was key, wasn't it, for the 997 Turbo, offering such a wide power band uh, of maximum torque over the 996 Turbo. As I said, from 1,950 right the way around to 5,000 RPM, you have maximum power available. It really is a fantastic technology. 
and is used on the 911 Turbo to this day. There's not too much to dislike about the 997 Turbo, is there? When it comes to buying one as well, pleasingly, they have a reputation for being fairly bulletproof. A good history is key. Second of all, you really need to get these on a ramp and have a good poke around underneath. As with all 997s, regards to the chassis componentry, there's a lot of alloy on steel parts. And with the passing of time, and particularly like here in the UK, the occasional bad weather, that gives rise to corrosion, doesn't it? So it's important that anything like chassis arms and stuff, they're kept on top of. They do corrode, they're expensive to replace. The other thing, which is fairly common knowledge online, is to do with the coolant pipes. They're known to fail. If they have been replaced, they would have been replaced with more durable items. The turbochargers themselves, they can fail occasionally. There should be no smoke coming from the car on startup or at any point, okay? Otherwise, the actuators on the rear spoiler, they can go, but it's a pretty good, pretty bulletproof car. The only complaint I have, objectively speaking, and this goes for all water-cooled 911 turbos up to the 992, um, is it's a little bit quiet under full throttle. It just lacks that little bit of theatre that the naturally aspirated cars have, which obviously you need to turn to the aftermarket for if you'd like to address that. Fast, fun, and reliable. The 997 Turbo is a great 911 all-rounder, a fitting last hurrah for the famous Metzger Flat 6.